Okay, so today for yin, we'll start in child's pose. You can definitely do child's pose without props. Um, if you're doing it without props, you'll just come to hands and knees, big toes together, sit the hips back, bring the forehead down to the mat. And maybe if you have props, you prefer to do it without props, you're welcome to. Just know it's a longer hold. If you do have a bolster, a bolster can be really nice. It keeps things soft. Um, and you put the bolster the long way in front of you, just between the knees. If you pull it too far back, then you don't have anything to rest the head on. And then you can start to come down. If you have a block, you could make a ramp with the block. And then you can even, some people like to wrap their arms around the bolster. So they're hugging it, um, and then rest the head down. So lots of different options. This gives you more height without the block. You keep the arms down and you come down a little bit lower. So figure out a child's pose that works best for you with or without props. And that's really a big part of this yin practice is listening to your body, setting it up in shapes and figuring out, okay, is this a good place to be? Or do I need to make some adjustments to bring more comfort to a certain area? And then in the long run, as we get better at that, we start listening to ourselves a lot more throughout the day off the mat. And when we can respond to that information we're getting, we take better care of ourselves. Begin to deepen the breath in and out through the nose, up and down the back of the throat. See where you can soften into the child's pose. If you're in a version of child's pose where you have the head turned in one direction, we're about halfway. You could lift the head, turn it the other way. See if that's okay on the neck. You'll start to lift the head up, making your way back up to hands and knees. If you have a bolster that you're using, just turn it so it's the wide way uh, in front of the knees, hands in front of the bolster. We're all on tabletop, all fours, with or without a bolster works. So let's take some cat cows. On the inhale, reach the heart forward, lift the tail. On the exhale, start to round the spine, chin in toward the chest. Then you just keep going on your own. A little bit of movement here to get the spine ready for our next pose. Also taking a moment to see how we feel, how the back feels.
One more cycle forward and back. Back to tabletop neutral spine, bring the forearms down to the mat. So we're coming into Sphinx pose. If you have a, a bolster, great, you can use it. If you don't, then just skip it. You don't need one. So you'll walk the feet back behind you, set the hips down onto the mat, tops of the feet to the mat. Elbows are all the way up against the bolster. Uh, if you don't have a bolster, then they're right underneath the shoulders. Chest is reaching forward. Back of the neck is long, so you're looking down the bridge of the nose. And the hips are down on the mat, but the belly's lifted. So that's a uh, move. It's not pressing into the mat. Open up across the chest, the collarbones. Get that area to feel wide. And you want it to feel wide in the front side, so where the collarbones are, and the back side, so where the shoulder blades are. And then from here, keep all of that. We'll start to get into the neck a little bit. So without collapsing the chest, bring the head down, keep the chest open and wide. Left ear comes over toward the left shoulder and that right shoulder isn't going with you. So it's still in the same place and you'll get a nice stretch on the right side of the neck as you lengthen it. Eyes can be closed or maybe you're still looking down. If you're comfortable with eyes closed, that might be more relaxing. And then bring the head back down. Feel the difference in one side of the neck compared to the other. Right ear comes over toward the right shoulder. Lengthening the left side of the neck. Keeping the collarbones broadened. And then we'll go side to side. So start to bring the chin down toward the chest. Left ear starts to make its way over toward the left shoulder. Bring the chin back down toward the chest. Right ear comes over toward the right shoulder. Stay around this pace, keep going on your own. Make sure you can still hear the sound of your own breath. Trying to breathe in and out through the nose, keeping the lips closed if you can. I know sometimes we have things going on where that's not possible. And if that's you, that's fine. You can start to feel how relaxing, just moving the head, isolating this movement, keeping the rest of the body still can be. And this is something that can be done when you're seated. And you just need a moment to cool down collect yourself. And you'll start to bring the chin back down towards center, lift the head, still feeling, even if the eyes are closed, you're looking down the bridge of the nose. Chest is nice and open. You're back in your full version of Sphinx pose or fuller version. We're not going all the way in. Okay, blink open the eyes. And you'll start to come out of this. So bring the hands to the mat, come up to hands and knees. And as you come up to hands and knees, you don't need a prop for this next pose. You can set the bolster off to the side. You're coming into melting heart pose. If for whatever reason, melting heart pose doesn't work for you, come back into Sphinx and just take a still version of Sphinx. So keeping the hips right over the knees, elbows come back down to the mat. And then walk the elbows forward so they're ahead of the shoulders, and you'll start to feel an uh, opening in the upper body. Forehead can come down, hug the belly in a little bit. And melting heart pose is another back bend. So we're layering one on top of the other. You can let the forehead be heavy on the mat, spine is long. 
And hugging the belly in keeps your lower back long. So that's why we do that. Sometimes when we relax the belly, the lower back sinks to the mat and that's too much uh, weight for the lower back to um, hold in the body. If you want a deeper shoulder opening, I'll give you uh, an opportunity for one. You can skip it if this is enough. So if you want a little bit more, you can play with this. Hands come together like prayer, back behind the head. If that feels okay, then walk the elbows forward just a little bit so you feel some length, uh, more length created in the sides of the torso. Try to keep the integrity of the belly hugging in, spine long. And at any point you can bring the hands back down. And go back to where you were if that's better. And if the hands are back behind the head, bring them back down to the mat. We'll all start to lift the head up, bring the elbows back in underneath us. And now you're coming up to tabletop. If you're in Sphinx pose, come back up to all fours. So if you're on a hard surface like me, you'll probably want a little bit more padding. If you're on carpet, you're probably fine. If you're on a hard surface, just take your mat if you're using one, roll it back so it's about a third of the way. Um, folded. And then you'll bring the knees up on top of that. So it just gives you a little extra padding, something to keep in mind in your um, other poses if you ever need it. You can either tuck the toes or you can rest the top of the feet on the mat. It's a matter of comfort, whichever one feels better, but you're coming up to standing on the knees. So as you come up to standing on the knees, bring the hands to the lower back. Fingertips down is a little bit easier than fingertips up. And you're just putting the hands on um, that curve of um, the spine. So hug the outer elbows in. You want to feel some engagement in the legs. So it's like you're lifting the inner thighs up, core hugs in, chest starts to lift. Hips need to stay right over the knees. You can stay looking forward as you bring the chest back, or you could look up. So this is camel pose, Ustrasana. It's a big back bend, but we worked our way to it with the first two back bends. So body is ready for it. It brings energy into the body. It's always surprising to know that this is part of a yin practice. It is a yin pose, but it also can be found in a flow class. Slowly come back up. So the head's right in line with the rest of the body. Then you can untuck the toes, sit back onto the heels if that's comfortable, or find some resting position. Just take in that energy that the back bend created. Eyes can be closed. Hands can just rest on the thighs. Not counterposing because we have another round ahead of us. 
So blink open the eyes, come back up to standing on the knees, decide what you want to do with the feet, tucked uh, toes or tops of the feet down, hands to the lower back, hug the outer elbows in, find that engagement in the thighs, knees or hip width distance apart. I don't think I mentioned that before, so they're not touching lift the torso, lift the chest, and then start to lean back just with the upper body. Keep the hips in line with the knees. And you can feel you don't really need to go that far. So you feel a nice opening in the front side of the body. So the back side of the body is contracting to help you open up. It's a deep stretch for all those muscles in the front quads all the way up through the core, chest, Gaze forward sometimes helps you keep the neck long. And slowly come back up, rest, untuck the toes if they're tucked, sit back on the heels, maybe close the eyes. Feel the sensation that the pose brought. One last round of camel, come back up onto the knees, tuck the toes, untuck the toes, hands to the lower back, lift and spread the chest, keep those legs engaged, outer elbows hug in, it's your final one, so it could be a little bit deeper, but it's yin, so you're not trying to go 100% of the way in, just go to where it feels good, feels sustainable, you won't be here very long. Slowly come back up, untuck the toes, rest the hips back down to the mat, heels, wherever is comfortable for them to rest. Slow down the breath. Start to blink open the eyes. If you have your mat folded, come forward to hands and knees, unroll it so it's back to the way it was. And then we'll all come to seated on the mat. So bring the soles of the feet to the mat, scoot yourself forward so there's plenty of space back behind you. If you have a block, have it nearby, have the bolster nearby. You just want it on the side of the mat, just in case you want to use it. You don't have to get back up to, to um, grab it. So once you come down onto your back, head resting on the mat, soles of the feet on the mat, hug the right knee in toward the chest. Let's just bring some space to the lower back. Right foot comes down to the mat, hug the left knee in toward the chest. Left foot comes down to the mat. So both feet are down, scoot the hips over to the right a little bit, bring the knees over to the left. So here you could put a block between the knees. You could put a bolster between the knees. Actually, what feels good is knees, shins, and feet. So you have total padding between the legs. Right arm reaches back behind you. Hand could be in line with the shoulder, but if it bothers uh, your shoulders, then you could just bring the arm down a little bit lower, or maybe it's a lot lower if you have something serious going on. So find your way into a reclined spinal twist, left hand, just rests on the body somewhere. The head will probably naturally start to roll to the right. Don't push it. Feel, uh, find a place where your neck is okay with this.
here, looking over to the right, start to roll the head back to center. If you have anything between the knees, set it off to the side, come on back to your back, soles of the feet to the mat. And if you're using a prop, maybe just move it over to your right side. So it's there for you. Bring the knees in toward the chest, hang on to the knees, keep the knees and the feet together. Just start to move the knees around in a slow circle as a counter for the twist before we switch sides. And then switch the direction of your circles. Set the feet back down onto the mat. Scoot the hips over to the left a little bit. Knees come over to the right. If you're using a prop between the knees, grab it. It just brings some more space to the lower back. So you can definitely do this without anything between the knees. It's still a reclined spinal twist. Left arm reaches back behind you. Maybe the head starts to roll to the left. Just go slow so that you can listen to what the body actually needs instead of just forcing it into a shape thoughtlessly. You'll start to bring the head back to center, move any props you have between the knees off to the side, come on back onto your back, soles of the feet are on the mat. Still just moving slowly. Let's bring the knees in toward the chest, keeping the knees and the feet together as you come into those circles, moving the knees around, going in one direction. and switch the direction, go the other way.
and set the feet down to the mat, roll over to your right side, use the left hand to bring yourself up to seated. You'll want to have your blocks if you're using them. Um, you'll come to a wide-legged straddle and you could sit up on the bolster. That's up to you if you want more padding underneath the hips or if uh, the hips are tight, lifting them up can be a little bit easier. Also, if there's a lot of rounding that happens in the lower back, lifting the hips up helps with that. So wide-legged straddle, not as wide as you can go, but you do want a wide, um, a wide seat with the legs sitting up tall, uh, grab on to the back of the left thigh and bring the left foot in. So you're not trying to bring this left foot all the way over to the opposite thigh. You're actually trying to open up, um, this left hip. So you want the toes to point straight forward. So the, um, foot is centered with the body. And this is called half butterfly. So don't do this part, but if you were to have the feet together, this is exactly how this leg would be. You're just keeping this leg out to the side. Um, if you have blocks, those could be nice. I would put them um, out in front of you, sit up tall. Now just start to fold forward, straight forward. So you're not going right or left. You're just going straight forward putting some weight on the hip opening. So we know when we fold forward over the hips, you put weight on the hips, depending on how the legs are shaped, you have a hip opening. So this is a hip opening called half butterfly. Once you get down to a place, a good place to start in the pose, you wanna leave some room to go deeper over time without any effort. Maybe use the blocks. They could be arm, and you can skip the blocks. They could be armrests. You could build something for the head to rest on. You could use them underneath the hands and just reach the hands away from you, keeping them lifted on the blocks. So whatever helps you soften the shape, keeping it more relaxed. Rounding of the spines, okay. because it's yin, it's a softer practice. And it's also a cooling practice. I'm coming from to you from a very hot climate in the desert. So our temperatures are in the 100, over 100 degrees right now, Fahrenheit. And it's nice to have access to something that's cooling. And yin is a great solution. You'll start to bring yourself back up to seated. If you have any props in front of you, just 
put those out a little bit farther in front. Grab onto the back of the left thigh, bring the sole of the foot to the mat, grab onto the back of the right thigh, sole of the foot onto the mat, hands back behind you. Let's move the knees side to side like windshield wipers. And you should feel a difference in one hip versus the other. You just work that uh, left bit, left hip quite a bit. We'll even it out, but this is a nice counter to get some movement in before we switch sides. Okay, come back to your wide-legged seat. Let's grab onto the back of the right thigh, bring the sole of the foot to center as best as you can. If it feels more comfortable to go toward that other leg, then you can do that. You just need to work with whatever you have going on in your body and then start to hinge forward, straight forward. So try not to lean to one side or the other. This side could be totally different. We often have one hip that's more open. So maybe you're not in the same exact place to start and maybe you don't end up in the same place. That's not the goal. The goal is to find a similar sensation in this hip. Assuming your hips are even <laughs> some, some, some of you might have a completely new hip on one side and that's not going to feel the same. Last little bit here, maybe noticing how far you've come in the pose. And we'll start to come back up to seated, take your time, push the blocks out in front of you. If you're using them, grab onto the back of the right thigh, sole the foot to the mat, left foot to the mat, using the hands to move the legs. That's a more cooling experience. Bring the hands back behind you. So you're reclined and bring the knees side to side, find those windshield wipers again. And we'll come back to a seat. This time, bring the soles of the feet together. So we'll do full butterfly. You can lift the hips up. You could put blocks underneath the knees too, especially if there's any too much pulling on the inner thigh groin area or the knees just need more support, or you can keep them out in front of you. So grab onto 
uh, the shins, ankles, maybe the inner edges of the feet if they're easier to reach. If your hips are up higher, they'll be harder to reach. They'll just be further away. And then you'll start to hinge forward, go slow, just go three quarters of the way in. So not as deep as you can go in this shape. Let the head and the neck go. Upper back will start to round. That's fine. That'll help you calm and stay cool in the pose. Maybe noticing what's different in doing half the shape versus the full shape. The body's definitely more familiar with it this time. You'll start to make your way back up to seated. Use the hands to bring the knees back together. Take windshield wipers again. So we started with the upper body today in our practice. Did some deep work in the spine with all those back bends, the twists. Now we're starting to get into the lower body going deeper and deeper here. So come back to your wide-legged straddle. Feel free to prop the hips up if that's working for you. If you have blocks, put them uh, on each side of the right leg and we'll just fold over the right leg. You don't need to go very far, especially this way. It, it's an awkward shape for the body. So just go to a soft place, whatever that means for you. Can use blocks underneath the forearms, hands, or just hands down toward the mat. And the feet can relax. The toes are still pointing up. That left knee is still pointing up. Try not to let that cave in. We've done quite a bit of forward folding with all these hip openers. So this one should hopefully feel a little bit better. You're getting into the back as well as the hips. So some of you might be feeling some length on that left side of the back.
Make your way back up to seated. And then just sit here, sit up tall, close the eyes, feel the difference in one side of the back compared to the other, maybe one hip compared to the other, maybe not, or even the back side of the legs might be a little different. And if you're using the blocks, take the blocks, move them over to the other leg. Sit up tall first and then start to round forward, falling over the left leg this time. Take your time coming into it. You fell a lot deeper into the pose on the first leg, so don't try to go to that same place on this leg. Keep it up a little higher than you think, and you'll naturally fall in just with the weight going forward over the leg. We'll start to come back up to seated. If you're using blocks, just bring them out in front of you. Bring the hands back behind you, soles of the feet to the mat. Take windshield wipers again. So we did the wide-legged straddle side to side. Now we'll go center. This is a, a bigger pose, but one we've worked our way up to. So hopefully it'll feel great. So two options with the legs. You can do what we've been doing with the legs out wide. If you know this doesn't work for you, another op, or if you get into it and it's not working for you, you just bring the soles of the feet to the mat, knees are bent and you can fold forward. But try if you can with the legs out uh, straight and then just fold straight forward like we were doing with half butterfly. Use the blocks if you have them underneath the forearms, build something underneath the head or just underneath the hands, whatever's working. Close the eyes. 
relax, relaxing the legs, try not to let the knees cave in, but you don't need as much energy, uh, pressing out through the legs, out through the soles of the feet. and start to make your way back up. If you have any props in front of you, you can set those off to the side, grab onto the backs of the thighs, soles of the feet to the mat, bring the knees side to side. Last windshield wipers, you could play with bringing the knees down a little deeper to the, to, or closer to the mat. Now that the hips are so open, that might feel nice, especially that internal hip rotation when the inner edge of the knee comes down toward the mat. We haven't done a lot of that today. So that can feel like a nice counter. And one more time each side. You'll come back to center, turn to face forward if you're facing the side. So we're coming into Shavasana. If you have props, great. If you don't, then just lie down flat. If you do have a bolster, bring it back behind you the wide way, that'll be a pillow. And then if you have blocks, Bring them um, to the sides of the mat over by the hips. Lie down so that the head and neck are both supported with the bolster or pillow, whatever you have. And the head can be down flat. That's fine too. So the blocks, let's bring those to the lowest height, the wide way. And those are going to go underneath the thighs, but you want the knees to be pointing out. So legs are wider than hip width distance apart so that when you extend the legs, feet were probably going off the mat and you're lifting the thighs with the blocks. So um, the knees are also lifted too. And the arms can go down by the sides, palms can face up. Some people like to have the hands on the body and sometimes that's just an energetic thing. So maybe you feel like that today 
or maybe you always do and you typically uh, in your and you don't today. So feel which one is best for your shavasana. If you have something to cover the eyes, that's always a great way to enhance the experience. Take one more deep breath in through the nose. Slowly back out through the nose. And now you let go of the breath control. So just let the body go back to breathing on its own. Let the jaw become heavy. You'll start to wiggle the fingers and the toes, finding some small movements in the hands and the feet. Walk the feet in, bending the knees. If you're using blocks underneath the, the thighs, you can just set those off to the side so they're out of the way. Roll over to your right side. You can keep the head on the pillow if you're using one. Lying here for a moment, you're on our, your back for a few minutes. So spend a couple breaths here transitioning then using the left hand press yourself up to a comfortable seat maybe your meditation seat cross-legged seat if that's available sitting up tall hugging the core in and here we are putting some effort into this seated posture so you're rising up through the crown of the head feeling all that space you made in the entire body how comfortable and e how much easier it is to get into your meditation seat after a yin practice. Bring the hands together in front of you. Keep the chest lifted. Just bring a slight bow to the head so that you can honor and acknowledge your heart and spirit as well as everyone around you. 
all of us a part of the harmonious whole. Bring the head back up, blink open the eyes. Namaste. Thanks so much. I'm realizing um, I teach yin twice a week. So I teach this live stream version of it virtually. And then I teach it in person. And I'd say out of the styles of yoga that I teach, this is the one I always get the most excited about teaching ahead of time. It always just seems to be coming at the right time. Is there a wrong time for yin? I don't know. I don't think so. Not for me. All right. See you next week. Have a good evening or day.